Hey everyone, Harrison here from Grayson & Harrison. Today we're going to be talking about DIY conversion vans and what it takes to be eligible to join Harvest Host. As you build out your dream van, it's hard to not think of all the wonderful places that you're going to go. Honestly, a lot of those places are probably Harvest Host locations. So for those of you who don't know, a Harvest Host location is a local uh, business or establishment who has welcomed Harvest Host members to an overnight stay um, you know, a lot of these host locations, it's like breweries, wineries, distilleries, museums, farms, uh, like you know, there's so many wonderful places. So I can't tell you how cool it is to wake up, look out your window and watch the sunrise at a winery, a farm, like it's absolutely gorgeous. So in order to participate in the Harvest Host program, your van or RV or trailer, it must be self-contained. So what does self-contained mean? Let's go ahead and dive into that. So really it's quite simple, not much is required. You can remember it with five letters, T-W-C-R-V. What do those stand for? Toilet, water, cooking, RV. Host locations are very kind and courteous towards members and ensuring that your rig is fully self-contained really helps share the same respect towards the host location. We want everyone to be happy, including the hosts. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into the T-W-C-R-V. Uh, we'll start with T, toilet. Let's face it, a lot of us have to get up to use the restroom in the middle of the night. We do ask that you use your own toilet instead of uh, any sort of alternative in order to be as respectful to the host as possible. So if you're building out your van and you're looking for a toilet and it feels daunting, I totally get it. At the end of the day, there's really three types of toilets to consider. There's your composting, your cassette, and your incinerating. A composting toilet is a toilet that will assist with composting whatever you put inside of it. Most of these toilets have two chambers, one of them for solids, one for liquids. Once you've well added your solids to the toilet, you'll give it a crank which mixes the solids with your composting material. Peat moss is often recommended since it's cheap, absorbs odor, and easily available at local gardening centers. Once the solids container is full, a good option for disposal is actually the trash. Uh, waste management, who controls over 25% of trash in the United States, they recommend, uh, you know, they say that putting it in the trash is A-OK. -okay. Now, I would recommend bagging it first in order to be courteous to others that might be walking by that trash can. But before we move on, let's all agree to not do this in the trash cans at host locations, period. As for emptying the liquids container, we want to make sure we find a low traffic area with minimal human planted foliage, as we want to be respectful to everyone. Uh, you know, like gravel or dirt is great. Make sure to not pour it all in one spot, but I would definitely avoid, uh, you know, concrete, for example. A cassette toilet is super simple. They're very affordable. Imagine this, but everything goes into one container and there's no composting. You basically just pour it all out. For a cassette toilet, as far as disposal goes, I would definitely recommend finding a dump station. The last option is an incinerating toilet. These are less common, have the highest price tag of them all, but I mean, that's not a shocker, right? Uh, an incinerating toilet is exactly what it sounds like. It basically just burns everything that you put inside of it. Now that the messy stuff is out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into W, water. Water is about as simple as it sounds. Make sure you have a place to get fresh drinking water, but more importantly, make sure you have a gray tank. What's a gray tank? A gray tank is what's basically at the other end of your drain. So it's where all your used water goes. Essentially, we don't want members dumping buckets of water all over the host location's property. This all goes back to respect. C isn't much more complex. Some of us get up to use the restroom in the middle of the night. Others of us might grab a snack. If you're the snacking kind, listen up because this is for you. Your van or RV must have an indoors cooking facility. It's understandable why business owners might not want people having a barbecue in their parking lot. In order to avoid making a mess, distracting existing customers or frustrating the owner, all cooking must be done 100% inside of your rig. The final letters are RV, and you guessed it, they stand for RV. This is code for no tents allowed. Our hosts have welcomed RVs, trailers, vans, but they certainly didn't have an intention of becoming a scout's campground. In the spirit of making life simple and enjoyable for all who participate, members are only allowed to stay in trailers, RVs, and vans. So I do wanna mention that pop-up campers and pop-up trailers are not allowed, they are not eligible. In a nutshell, as long as in your van you have a toilet, water, and cooking, you're self-contained. Thanks for watching. Check back for more videos on how to make the most of Harvest Hosts. Excited about joining the program? Uh, go ahead and use the link in the description or use the code TUBE at setup. T-U-B-E, TUBE. I hope that you guys like this video. If you could go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe. We look forward to seeing you next time.